The festive season came to a violent end in Beyrout just after 9.30 this morning. In a country that has seen much violence, the glitzy, renovated heart of the capital had been spared so far. Cars were set ablaze by the blast, windows of French restaurants and designer boutiques shattered. Teenagers enjoying the sun and posting pictures on social media moments before a car parked behind them exploded, wrecking their young lives. We were inside and felt glass breaking and coming in. Then we heard the sound. An explosion happened. We waited till it was over and then we went out and saw this. The target was this man, Mohammed Shatah, once an ambassador to the U.S. and a finance minister, a father of two. He was a voice of moderation in a polarized country. He was also an advisor to the former prime minister, Saad Hariri. Both were vocal critics of Syria's government and of Hezbollah. The Lebanese Shia militant group has been sending its fighters to Syria for months to support President Bashar al-Assad. Lebanon is deeply divided over the war next door. Sunni militants from here have been crossing into Syria as well to help the rebels. At the site of the bombing in Beirut, Mr. Shatah's friends in mourning said his killing was a message. He was an advocate of Lebanon's neutrality in the war with, uh, with Syria, was an advocate of Hezbollah pulling out and having an agreement to uh, keep Lebanon uh, away from the fray in Syria. Hezbollah too, though, has paid the price for its role in Syria. Suicide bombings have targeted civilian areas in its stronghold in southern Beirut. Lebanon is also still haunted by a long string of unresolved assassinations. And in the past, the finger has been pointed in many directions, including at Syria. But whoever was behind this powerful car bomb this morning, one thing is certain. Lebanon's own fate is increasingly tied to the outcome of the war raging across 